I'm going to try something today to teach you logic and PLCs and you can play along at home, yeah? So let me show you what people were asking me about yesterday about PLC and logic. So yesterday I showed this picture, yeah? So we had all the inputs on this side. These were things like key switch available and all that bollocks. And you had all this shit in the middle and you had an outcome. So you had the inputs and you have an outcome. And people were asking, people didn't really understand all this shit in the middle, yeah? So now we're all going to learn together if you want to. Um, what all this shit in the middle means and today you're going to learn how this shit in the middle works or some of it let's start off first thing you need to do is go on the internet and google logic gate symbols and just quickly learn what an and or an or gate is and a timer but i'm going to show you that now anyway but the reference is there on google if you don't need it let me show you what and or and timers do because that's all you're going to need to do this play along at home thing and that is all that's on this one here in the example, which I'll zoom into. These are the logic symbols you're going to use. You're going to use or, which means if this one is on, or this one is on, this one becomes true. The and, if that one is on, and that one has to be on, that becomes true. And then you can use a timer. So if you put something into here, it'll go one, two, three, four, five, because I've said it's a five second timer, and then it becomes true. So it sort of delays it going along while you may be waiting for other things to happen. So you're going to use all gates and gates and a timer. That is all you're going to need for this. Next thing you need to do is get a piece of A4 paper like this and write the following things down one side, yeah? Hat, pants, jeans, body is dry, socks, t-shirt, coat, scarf, and gloves. And the output you're going to have is go out we're going to assume here that if you were to put these items on in your code my tape's moved now so i can't think yet if you put these items on in your code you will put them on in the correct place so the hat will go on your head the pants will go with pants go the jeans will go with jeans go yeah you won't try and put your jeans on your head they'll always be put in the correct place but they won't be put in the correct order which is what you need the code for to get from getting out the shower wet to get in to the stage where you can go out and you're going to write some PLC code or some logic code to get from get all this to this stage. With with chemicals and with things like baking, yeah, you might need eggs, flour, and water to make a cake, and butter and sugar. But you can't just slam it all in the bowl and mix it up. You've got to do it in the right order, and that's what logic control gives you is order. So, for example, in this scenario, yeah, you've got out the shower and you're wet, and you've got to do these things in the correct order to go out. And that's how you're going to work your code. So let's look at an example that everyone would come up with straight away. This will work, yeah? If you have this and gate and you need to have all of them, that and that and that and that and that and that, you'd have your hat on, your, your pants on, your jeans on, your body will be dry, your socks, your t-shirt, your coat, your scarf, your gloves. However, they won't work, they might not suddenly come in that order. You need to control the order. So in this case, it could be that could happen first, your socks. Then your jeans could happen next. Then your pants could happen next. Then you'd have your pants on the outside of your jeans, wouldn't you? So they don't all. If they all ram in at the same time, they can't arrive there at the same time. They need to be controlled at what time they arrive. So I'll give you a clue. The first thing you want is your body to be dry. Yeah. Then I'm guessing you probably put your pants on. Then it's up to you how you work it. But if you did it like this, you'd get an outcome. You'd go out, but you'd have your fucking pants on the outside of your fucking jeans, and you might have your t-shirt on the outside of your coat. So it doesn't work. So you need to work out that with and or. So if you fancy the challenge, go back, lay it out like that, that on that side, that on that side, put in your logic when you're done and we'll see how we get on. Uh, there is no actual solution. It's not like there's only one solution. There's loads of solutions. So don't feel stupid. Don't feel like I'm going to go. Tag me in it. I'll repost them. And then at some point, maybe on Sunday evening, I'll put up an example and a work for example of how I'd do it. And uh, we can all see who's right and wrong. But yeah, tag me in it and then I'll just share them. I'm not doing any of the other content this weekend. I'll just put those out for people to go, oh, no, you've got that bit wrong. Or, oh, won't that mean you do that? Or, won't that mean your pants go on outside your coat or something? Yeah, so have a bash. Uh, it'll help you understand logic loads easy. Once you understand logic, uh, programming PLCs becomes fucking very easy. Just a quick one, a few people are playing along at home, yeah? Years and years ago in a factory, we had a PLC. I think it was a PLC 3, Alan Bradley, yeah? And on the screen, it'd say, speed, temperature, time. 
and we had some code here that told you the speed, the temperature and the time. We had to make some modification to it and it was so old and ancient that there was no memory left. So to get the memory, we had to delete the text off the screen that said date, time, temperature, whatever it was. And we put sticky labels on the screen because those three words took up about two kilobytes of memory. And that freed up enough room for about, I don't know, 150 more lines of code. That's how it used to be before like media and storage and kilobytes were cheap, like with SSDs and all that kind of thing. So if you do manage to do it, what you need to then do is go back and look at it and go, well, how can I simplify it? Every person's code looks like their code. But anyone can get it to work, then you've got to go back and go, well, hang on a minute, how can I streamline this and make it easier? Otherwise, every bit of code you did would take for fucking ever. So if you crack it, go back and look at that. This example by Sparky by 50 is, is, is a great example of a bit of code, yeah? Um, but it's a bit flawed, and I'll go into that now. I was going to do it tomorrow. I was going to have to draw it myself and go into it tomorrow, but I'll go into it now so anyone that's got, having to go at home, which people clearly are doing, can uh, avoid the flaw he's got in his code. I'll tell you what it is. I'll put it up here as well. First of all, on the positive point, he's drawn it in Excel. Excel could be used for anything. Case in point, well done. He's fell into a trap that a lot of people do when they're using PLCs or doing PLC or logic for the first time, yeah? He's made extensive use of timers. With that, any positive return that something's been done. So what he's used there is what I would call cascade timing. So he's started at a zero point and he's put my pants on, say. Then after 15 seconds that he's allowed for me to get my pants on, he's put my socks on. Then after 15 seconds after that, he's done something else. The problem is... With cascade timing, i.e. all timing starting from the zero point, if you don't get your pants in time, then you, you, as in you're delayed, then you've got to start trying to get your socks on. So say it's 15 seconds to get your pants on, you don't make it, then you've got to stop. The computer would stop putting your pants on and go for your socks. Then if you didn't do that in time, it would stop doing whatever it's doing and do for the next thing. So you could end up with a pair of pants around your knees, one sock on, Trousers over the top of them, they get stuck at your pants and things start crashing into each other. So, whilst timers are a very powerful tool for doing PLC code, they don't offer positive feedback on their own. Let's say we had a cat flap that opened automatically. So I'll send the command to the cat flap to open, yeah? And the cat flap opens. And 30 seconds later, the cat flap closes. That's the only time in that hour, say, it happens every hour that the cat can get out. If I send a command to open a cat flap and then wait 15 seconds, I've got absolutely no indication of whether the cat flap's actually open. The cat flap could be closed. The cat could be sat in front of it. It could be stuck. What you would do is you would send a command to open the cat flap and then you would have a sensor that detects it is open. Up on detection that it is open, that would start the timer. So the command to open it wouldn't start the timer. The, the signal that it's actually open would do it, if that makes sense. So in that manner, you're not acting on the command, you're acting on the confirmed response that the cat flap is open. 15 seconds later, cat flap closes, doink, and then you reset the timer ready for the next time by the sensor that tells it the cat flap is closed. If you don't have the sensors, you're fucked. So yeah, when you are designing code, you need to know what inputs and outputs you're working with. So for that cap flap, for example, you'd want a button that opens it, a button that closes it, a button that tells you it's a sense that tells you it's open, a sense that tells you it's closed. Then you can start using your AND or NOR gate. So you could have uh, an input gate of three bits of bits. So one of them would be open, one of them would be closed. Easy peasy. If it's none of them or it's both of them, it's faulty. That should get your brains ticking. But yeah, time is a good idea, but they're not a good idea in this case. So if you've done that, jump back to the drawing board and I'll reveal my solution tomorrow. Boring. I want to uh, go over or try to go over or give my opinion and my solution to the challenge I set yesterday for the logic. So hold on to your hearts. It's going to be a fucking exciting ride. So we need to get these things done in the correct order, yeah? We need to get these clothes put in the correct order so that we can go out. We've got out the shower... So let's establish the order first, yeah? Let's not just start writing code. Let's just think logically about what's got to happen because it's called logic. 
So first of all, body must be dry, it's got to be warm. Then, you've got to get your pants on and your socks on, because they're your underwear you've got available, yeah? But hang on. Some people actually worked out some code for themselves, which actually exists. Some people got way more advanced and worked out that if your body was dry, you could put your pants and your socks on because they're the base layers you've got on this list. Doing those together like that is what they call a subroutine. And that is worth Googling. I'm not going to go into it today because we're really low level graphics here. But on this particular example, I'll tell you now, you as a human can't put your pants and your socks on at the same time, can you? Because if you tried to put your pants and your socks at the same time, you would fucking probably fall over. So you didn't think logically, although you are getting into the realms of deeper coding, logically, just think about it, because it's called logic, you can't put your pants and your socks at the same time. Neither can you put your hat on at the same time as your coat or your scarf. Everything on this list has got to be done individually because you've only got one pair of hands. So that was the logical part to think about. So let's get back to that. So the next one is, let's go for pants. That's two. Then socks is three. Then you've got your jeans and your t-shirt. Well, again, it don't matter. So let's go for, we went for, we went with pants because we was bottomed in. So let's go for four for jeans, five for t-shirt. We've got coat, scarf, gloves and hat. So let's go for coat is six, scarf is seven, hat is eight. Put your gloves on last because you're doing all the other jobs. That's nine. So that's the order I've worked out. Whether that's right or wrong doesn't matter to the code yet, but that's the order I'm going to do him in to go out. I didn't press the fucking button because Instagram people are putting stupid bands at the bottom. Yeah, so what I've done is I've took, I've took body dry, which is the first thing I've got to do. Correct? And then I've took it into an and gate. Because if I just use that, it's just body dry. It's not got anything about it, so... I've took body dry into an hand gate and then I've took a timer off it for five seconds. So five seconds later, I'm still dry. So that means sort of like, yeah, I'm dry. Then you do a check to see if you're still dry and you've got both of them. And this comes out as this. Now, this true output is not the same as these inputs. This is body dry confirmed because you are dry. Then you check you as dry and you add them together, which means you've got body dry confirmed. Now we can work with this. What you've got to remember is these are inputs, this is an action, and this is something that results of those inputs and that action. So now when we put pants on, which are here, we're going to take this body dry confirmed. So I've took my body dry confirmed up here, and I'm going to use an and gate. And I'm going to put my pants on into it. Now what we're saying is, body dry confirmed, and put your pants on. And then in here, that action happens. So then you become dry pants. So this now, as an action, this, 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 this true statement here is pants on and they're on and you're dry. Then we can take that. Oh, it's going to start getting a mess. So what we're going now is put socks on. So I can take socks up here, whoop, over that over that to another and gate and then we're taking dry with pants on and adding socks so now we get dry so now this output is dry pants and socks and i'm guessing you've worked it out now yeah it's just repeating this process so now we want another and and we get the third one sorry the fourth one which is jeans so we take jeans from here and add it to that. So now we've got a dry pants and socks input, which is confirmed and we add jeans and we end up with dry pants, socks and jeans. And that is how you continue to do it, yeah? So it's just a case of confirming the dryness, adding the product, adding another thing and then you get that confirmation out of it then you add the next thing and add the next thing and add the next thing. That is one way of getting it to go in the right order. So that's it. That's how it works. I'm just going to show you one more example that I talked about yesterday, which was the cat flap. We're not going to open or close the cat flap. We're going to write some code that tells us where the cat flap is or if it's broken. And I'll show you how you come up with that solution. 
and I'll show you what you'd work out first for your logic. Here's a quick one for this cat flap, yeah? When the cat flap is closed, there's a sensor, and when the cat flap is open, there's a sensor. So how many positions are there? Well, I did a true toe to work it out, yeah? So we've got the open sensor, which is this one. Yeah, we've got the closed sensor, which is that one. So, both sensors could be seeing something open. Yeah, that's one possibility. The open sensor could be seeing something, and the closed sensor's not seeing something, which would mean that it was open. The open sensor could be seeing nothing, and the closed sensor could be seeing something, which means it would be closed. And then you'd have zero and zero, where no sensor seeing anything, yeah? What's the outcome of these? So that, if they're both there, is a fault. If the open sensor is seeing something, the closed sensor is not, it's open. If the open sensor is seeing nothing, and the closed sensor is seeing something, it's closed. And if they both see nothing, it's faulty. And that is where your logic comes from. Hello! Right, we're re recording this, aren't we? Because I accidentally recorded it to the wrong thing. So, on that thing, that true table there, for the cat flap being open and closed, you can work out whether it's faulty or whether it's working, as in it's open, it's closed. Unfortunately, what you've got to remember is, at some point between it opening and closing, it won't meet any sensor. So it'll automatically come up as closed, won't it? It'll come up as faulty, won't it, yeah? So then you start to get all these layers of code where you know if it's closed because the sensor's on. You know if it's open because the sensor's on. However, if neither sensor's been activated, it could be moving between the open and closed position. Then you have to start incorporating things like snub timers to ignore the fact that it could be faulty for a few seconds or appear faulty for a few seconds. That's when PLC coding gets hard because you've got to think really logically about everything. What I suggest you do if you want to know more is Google PLC simulators. There's four or five top searches on Google and they're all really, really good simulators. I think we've covered most of it, didn't we? We think we've covered most of the PLC basics there. Check out the PLC simulators. If you're going to go on the PLC or simulators, use the cat flap. Yeah, sense the cat coming towards it on either side of a door. Open the cat flap, let the cat pass through, close it, then have it have a knowledge whether it's open or closed. Do you have a sense that tells you the cat's in the flap so you don't chop it in half? Do you have a sense on each side that tells you the cat's coming towards it? Before you start writing any code, you've got to design the physical hardware of the sensing of the cat and the flaps opening and closing. Before you do your logic, then write your code. Follow that procedure. Yeah. The cat flaps don't chip it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Have a go, let me know how you get on. And I'm going to do some more PLC videos that will involve me not holding a child because you woke up, haven't you? Hope that helped everyone. See you later.